Our goal for this project was to make protein design accessible to everyone and allow anyone to design a protein on the computer. You do not have to be an expert to use this. Any user can go to the website and type in their name into a protein. They can type in a new protein sequence or a motif that they're interested in. Once you input your starting sequence and parameters, you just click generate and the model in the background will run for you and design you a new protein. Protein design is important because proteins are the main tools that biology uses. And if we can harness those same tools, we can apply them to new challenges of our generation, whether it's climate or vaccine discovery. My name is Jacob Gershon, and I'm a graduate student at the Institute for Protein Design. So we're really excited about new advances in technology and particularly machine learning that have enabled us to be able to design these types of platforms and make them fast and accessible for people to use almost anywhere. In the past two years, new tools have been developed that allowed us to do this. So in biology, proteins do a variety of different functions. You can think of them as little machines that are within your cells making sure they run properly. For instance, they can take in food and, and convert that into energy. Protein design is important because it allows us to do things at the molecular level, which we have not been able to do with previous tools. A lot of things are possible with protein design. For instance, we can make more stable vaccines, more potent vaccines, or more potent um, drugs. And more recently, we can even start thinking about making more active enzymes. My name is Sydney Lasanza. I'm a graduate student at the Institute of Protein Design at the University of Washington. I think this moment is a critically exciting time within protein design because up until recently, we've been mostly working on proof of concepts, showing what we could do with protein design. But now with advancements and methods, now we're at the point where we can say, all right, the tools seem to be working well. What problems that are of interest to the rest of the world can we actually start applying this to? By making protein design accessible, we're empowering the public and scientists to generate completely new molecules. We included the molecular viewer to allow people to actually see the molecules that they're generating in real time and the outputs of the model and be able to play around with it and see how the effects of changing different parameters and the inputs do actually affect the outputs of what you're getting. Uh, machine learning is at the heart of this tool. It's the backbone of what actually allows it to generate proteins in real time. To train these models, we show the model all different types of protein sequences and protein structures and allow it to build its own understanding of how a protein should be constructed. The model has learned to make new proteins that have never been seen before in nature. What distinguishes this method from prior protein design deep learning methods or just protein design classical methods is the ability to design both sequence and structure concurrently. The sequence and structures that it's generating are novel. They're new, they've never been seen before. So after we design things within the computer, we want to make sure that they have the desired functionality. And the only sure way to go about doing that is actually going into the lab and doing experiments and testing to see, does it do the thing that I want it to do? In order to test them, we first need to make them. And then we take the proteins we've now synthesized, and then we test them for the given activity that we care about. We're starting to collect data to show that the designs made by the AI match the structure and behave as they should in the lab. With protein design, we can develop completely new vaccines that are cheap and effective, help plants grow in changing climates, and a whole bunch of other opportunities that we haven't even thought about yet. We think these tools will change the field of protein design and allow it to be more accessible for a wider audience. It really lowers the barrier of entry such that anyone around the world can start learning about protein design or start using it to address the problems that they most care about. I'm excited to see what people make with these tools and this is really just the beginning. <laughs>